Okay, so I changed the tile map from Spider Bee to something a little more palatable. Uh, this lesson, we're going to show you actually not how to load GeoJSON, which I said at the end of the last one. I was jumping the gun a little bit. That'll be the next lesson. But in this lesson, I'm going to show you how to add data to your map. One thing I noticed, though, quickly was that my menu bar disappeared up here. And I actually want that there. If this is a web page on my website, I want my menu bar to be floating on top of the map. And this has to do with CSS. If you want buttons and other uh, browser objects to float on top of your map and kind of look like floating boxes, all you really have to do is create a map style with a z-index, and we'll make this fairly high. We'll make this 5. And what a z-index is, is kind of, ele well, elevation, I guess you could say it's like la layer cake. Um, the higher the z-index, the higher the object is vertically on your website. Immediately after this, um, I have this thing called map header. And we'll see that it has a z-index of 10. So map header theoretically should now float on top of the map. But we'll see if this works. Voila, look. So this is actually how, you know, you've probably seen this on Google Maps, etc. But this is how you get menus that can open and close and stuff floating on top of the map. And it's really useful to make your map look a little more customized and tailored rather than just using default leaflet um, icons, etc. Okay, now to adding points. Back on point, as it were. Really easy. Again, what we're going to do is create a bunch of variables and use a bunch of um, the leaflet library. And the, the names are pretty easy to remember. So I'll call this first one variable place. And this will be l.marker. We'll come back to that. The second one I'll call variable um, uh, zone. Sorry, I shouldn't spend so much time thinking about silly names. And we'll call this one circle. So this is uh, how you create a circle in Leaflet. And the third one we'll call area. And this will be good. Polygon. So these are three different markers you can add. So what do we need to create a marker, do you think? First of all, the place is a point marker. Marker or Leaflet marker is a point marker. So, of course, we're going to need our coordinates, 45 minus 97. Let's hit save and see if anything happens. Hmm. I know why it didn't. Do you guys know why? Because we didn't add it to our map. There it is. We've got a little marker. Nice. All right. Circle. Circle, what we're going to have to do is create a bunch of properties. But first, we need to say um, it's center point. So let's do 45. Let's do 44 minus 94. All right. And then we're going to give it some properties. So. Um, Let's see, uh, color, red, uh, fill color, red, opacity, 0.75, and this is an important one, radius, let's say 5,000. Now, what am I forgetting here? It's not going to show up unless we add to map. So whenever we create a variable, we have to add it to the map. I'm sure I screwed up. Nope, there it is. So this is how we can add that shape as well. What if we want to change other attributes about the circle? Where do we go? Think about it. Documentation. Marker. Pop-up. Layers. Vector layers. Circle. Boom. We can look at everything it inherits, etc. Um, 
and you can change all of this stuff. All right. Back to brackets, polygons, same idea, except instead of a center point, you're going to use as many points as there are in your shape, um, and it draws an order. And I actually am loath to do this because it takes a while, but we'll we'll try it. All right, minus 93. Um, I think you need actually need double brackets here. All right, and then we'll do 43. Minus 92, what the hey, comma, and 41, minus 93. And we'll do the same thing. Color, um, we'll just do fill color to save time. And hit save. Let's see what happens. Oh, we broke it. We broke the internet. People. Oh, I see what I did. I forgot to put the closing bracket here. All right, it's not broken anymore. But I don't see it. Hmm. Fill color red, opacity one, color red, all right, let's figure out what's wrong, see? Oh, I know, amateur, I just explained what's wrong. See, you guys are probably going crazy there. Voila. And there you go. So, um, <laughs> sorry, probably had one too many sips of uh, wine tonight with dinner. This is uh, how you add different shapes to your map. Now, quickly before we go, what if you want a pop-up pop to occur with these? Easy peasy. Once you have created a variable, you just have to write the name of the variable. Uh, bind pop-up, which means a pop-up is bound to it. I guess, I mean, it's kind of self-explanatory. And you can write anything you want. You can write it in HTML. You can include tags that, you know, load CSS. Let's do another one. Um, area. And uh, what was the other one? Zone. Now, um, there's some default characteristics with pop-ups. Look at that. Um, and, and that is that when you click on another one, the first one, the last one disappears. This one, by the way, is the H1. That's why it's bigger. Um, another issue you'll you'll notice with this recording is that I'm on a Surface Pro 4 or some, I don't know, thing. And it obviously has a really high resolution display. So things look very small. When you create your map, you have the ability to um, put in some code that will offset this the small screen for example when you load the tiles uh, the tile layer you can actually put in the option of detect retina it's set to false let's change this to true really quickly so here we load the tiles now let's see what happens well, nothing. <laughs> I just have really 
damn fine resolution. All right. See you in the next lesson.